<laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Peter and welcome to my brand new series called Let's Talk. But before we start talking about this series, I would like to give a quick thank you to the main man for giving me a shout out on one of his videos. He has played a tremendous part in helping me build up this channel. He streams very entertaining content on Switch. Switch on Twitch and on his channel which I will link in the comments below he has been conducting tech and lectures on a variety of topics so I urge any of you who aren't already subscribed to him to check out his content and his channel and please tell the main man Peter says hi and for all of you new subscribers who came over from the main man's channel to check out my content thank you thank you so much I hope I can live up to your expectations now, just one last shout out. Thank you to my editor, Moogle Mog, for reading over my scripts and letting me bounce ideas off of you. You two have been a tremendous help. Now, I will try to gear these series uh, towards players of all skill levels. Now, depending on the topic, of course, uh, certain players of certain skill levels may find it more helpful than others. But the goal of the Let's Talk series is to cover topics that are rarely talked about in Tekken. Um, to shed some light on perhaps the mindset or the philosophy or psychology behind particular aspects of the game. For example, have you ever been hit by this? Or missed this punish? Or maybe not even parried this attack? Ever wonder why your reaction speed is so slow? Even though you know exactly what actions to respond with after they've happened or even practiced it for an hour or two. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not your reaction speed that is slow. Maybe. Your reaction time is probably around or slightly above average if you've been a gamer for years. So why can't you block these fucking seeable lows? Uh, block punish in time, or parry these goddamn junkyard strings, right? Well, there's something else at play here, and I'm going to help you understand and get better at that. Ready? Nah, you're not ready. But first, I'm going to smack you with some knowledge. Let's define reaction time. Reaction time is the amount of time between an onset of a stimulus and the initiation of a response. And what we often speak about when we're referring to reaction time, or rather response time, is often misconstrued and mislabeled. Here, let me explain. When you hear someone say, Oh, my reaction speed is too slow to block Snake Edge. What that person doesn't realize is that they aren't actually talking about their innate potential reaction time. If, for example, you can hit or catch an apple in the air before it drops four feet, that's 1.2 meters for you non-Americans, then you have the reaction speed to block Snake Edge, which is half a second. Don't believe me? Go into practice mode, set the computer to do Snake Edge repeatedly. See how many times you can block it in a minute. I guarantee you that you will most likely block it every time. No problem. So if in fact you can block Snake Edge, why can't you block it in a ranked match? I mean, well, that's because there's something else at play here. And I'm going to explain that in the upcoming section. The different pair times. <clears throat> Ooh, the different pair times for measuring response time. Simple response time, or SRT for short. This is exactly like the repeated snake edge or apple catching example. It's the easiest response time to understand, but the hardest to improve, if at all. It is simply the amount of time between a stimulus and a response. So more or less, this is your innate God-given ability to perceive, process, then act on the sensory information. Since it is mostly a biological limitation, that's why it's extremely hard to improve. Now. 
A real world example is in the Olympics when sprinters line up at the line and then wait for the gun, then dash out when they hear the gunfire. The stimulus is the sound of the gun being fired, and the response is to start running. In Tekken, this is rarely relevant as there is seldom ever only one, uno, stimulus to be prepared for, with the big exception of being the start of every round. The words round one or round two, ready, fight. Flashing on the screen is the stimulus, and the response is the execution of each player's initial action, which could be anywhere from blocking, performing an attack, uh, backdashing, or, or anything really. Choice response time, or CRT for short, is the delay following the presentation of several possible stimuli, where each stimulus requires a specific response. Now, CRT, unlike SRT, is much, much, much easier to improve with practice. A real-world example is something that you have already mastered. Typing. When you take a typing test, each letter you see is a unique stimulus that requires a unique response of hitting the corresponding letter on the keyboard. Now in Tekken, this is everywhere. I mean everywhere. Here's just one example. Josie and her infamous Crouch Dash 2 and Crouch Dash 3 mix-up. Crouch Dash 2 is a mid-launcher and Crouch Dash 3 is a low attack. There are clearly two different stimuli that each requires a different response. Crouch Dash 2, you stand block. Crouch Dash 3, you need to low block. So here's another example just to nail the point home. Watch Paul here do the following attacks. Up forward 4, forward 2, 3, down 1 plus 2, and down forward 3, 4. You're probably thinking, wait, you just have to stand block all of these attacks. They are either mids or highs. Where is the mix-up? True, you just stand block all of these. But, 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 your CRT comes into play when you have to block punish these moves correctly. Each of these attacks requires a different response depending on the frame data. If Paul does up forward 4, Jack has to punish with 1-1. One, one. If Paul does forward 2-3, Jack has to punish with 2-1. And if Paul does down 1 plus 2, Jack has to use down forward 2. And if Paul does down forward 3-4, Jack has to use forward 2. As you can see here, lots of possible stimulus stimuli and each would require a unique response. I could go on with more examples, but let's move on. All right, now that we have that out of the way, we can focus on looking at CRT, as we can work on improving this. So out you go, SRT. I want to bring up something that you already know the concept of, but probably never heard of, and that's Hicks Law. It states the following. The more options a person has to choose between, the longer it takes to make a decision. Aha! So this is the bottleneck that prevents many, many, many of us, myself included, from block punishing on time, low parrying on time, or even just blocking those damn snake edges on time, all right? It's because we are stuck processing so many fucking options that it is literally slowing our decision-making process down. But don't worry, there are ways to improve CRT, and I'm going to go over a bunch of them. Obviously, the better you know a situation, the faster and better your response will be. In essence, the more familiar you are with a stimulus, the faster you are able to process that stimulus. 
and in turn respond to it faster and sometimes almost to the point of SRT. Have you ever noticed, for example, how the pros almost immediately break throws like 90% of the time? Well, this is because they are so, so, so familiar with the arm animations, right? The arm animations that they no longer have to, you know, squint and differentiate between, oh, this is a, this is a left arm, or this is a right arm, or this is a two arm throw. They no longer have to process it. Simply, they're just reacting. Or here's another example. Uh, let's say you're playing Jack and you're against Paul and he throws out Phoenix Smasher. You don't have time to think in an actual match. Hmm, that's a minus 17 move. My minus 17 Punisher is forward for 1 plus 2. It would reach that far. I should throw out forward for 1 plus 2. Initially, when you're practicing, this is absolutely fine to do. However, once you're familiar with Paul's Phoenix Smasher as Jack, after you block it, you immediately go for 441 plus 2, as you have already burned that into your reactions to just use that move and not have to process all of the in-between information. And for all of you wondering why you can block Brian's Snake Edge, but you can't block Katarina's Slipping Tail, down back 4, or saying, for example, uh, Gigas's Brush Cutter, full crouch, down forward 2, or even Lily's Edelweiss, down back four, her snake edge. This is the reason, familiarity. I'm sure many of you have seen snake edge thrown out far more often than Gigas' brush cutter or uh, Lily's Edelweiss. So familiarity with the animation helps to react in time. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts here. You will have to spend time in practice mode familiarizing yourself with the whole cast of characters and their moves to improve on uh, block punishing, on uh, throw breaking, low parrying, or even just blocking in general. Expectation. All right, you can think of this as anticipation or prediction, or better yet, in fighting game lingo we call this a read. The better you are at expecting a stimulus, the faster you are to reacting to that stimulus. And Tekken, let's say you play multiple revenge matches against an opponent who keeps stealing wins from you over and over again with Snake Edge. If you're paying attention, now you should anticipate them doing it again in the future. Knowing what to look for will drastically help reduce the amount of options your brain has to process. So it will help speed up your reaction time. Remember, Hicks Law. The more options an individual has to choose between, the longer it will take that individual to make a decision. Here is one more example to really drive home the point. If we are playing Jack and our opponent is playing Law, and we are playing at range zero, which is right next to each other, point blank. Here are the moves that we can expect our opponent to use. And here is a video showing that. Cue that fucking music, DJ. As you can see, this is an astronomical amount of things to deal with because you're expecting everything. This is literally all of Law's move list that you have to expect when you're playing at range 0. But what if we start playing at range 2? Then all of a sudden now, that move list becomes much more easy to deal with. Then all of a sudden, like this whole list of things becomes more manageable. 
Law no longer has access to his standing jab as a pressure, his magic four as a counter hit, four one plus two uh, to continue to pressure you, his grab game, his forward two plus three no longer reaches you, his forward forward three plus four throw doesn't really reach you, his mids don't reach you, down forward one doesn't reach, down forward two doesn't reach, uh, his lows now as well, his lows like down four, down three plus four, down back three. Uh, all of these moves no longer reach. And also, you know, back two, that doesn't reach anymore. Hop kicks. We also don't have to deal with shenanigans like his, uh, his, his while standing game, for instance, while standing two, while standing four. Uh, we still have to deal with his slide, but we don't have to worry about the mids as much anymore. And his down forward two, three will still hit us. His forward forward three, like these longer range moves will hit us, but the closer pressure things, that's all out of the tables now. What about range three? What if we, all of a sudden we start playing at range three now? Look at this. Damn, you see all that red? Those are moves that Law can no longer hit us from range three with. All of those options are off the table for him. So, um, for instance, if Law wants to connect moves with us, he's limited to strings that he has to absolutely commit to. Uh, he has to commit to things like uh, slide, he has to commit to things like 4-4-3, he has to start committing to things like um, junkyard kick, he's got to commit to um, a 4 one 3 like he's got to, his move list is just now shrank so much. So what I'm trying to drive at here is by playing at range 3, we're able to quickly minimize the amount of things to expect from our opponent because if our opponent wants to now make contact with us these are the moves that we can expect from him because these are the only ones that will make contact with us preparation this is having an action or set of actions ready to use at a moment's notice preparation and expectation are very closely linked as preparation is affected by expectations. More often than not, your level of expectation determines your level of preparation. That is to say, you will be more prepared to respond to something if you are expecting it. Knowing what your opponent will do and having a counter or move ready prepared will shorten your reaction time. All right. Back to our example of Jack versus Law. We are playing at range 3, which means our options that we can expect from our opponent are limited to just these moves, right? These moves. Because this is what we're expecting, we can prepare ourselves to punish these moves with tools like down forward 2 and 1-1. One, one. And for the most part, you know, these are the only tools that we'll really need to punish Law. So if Law decides to connect with any of the attacks that are aforementioned here, we can punish it with just two moves. And if Law misjudges his distance and happens to whiff, we only need one move to whiff punish him. Because at this range, most of the things that he's going to be throwing out, we can whiff punish with down forward too. Easy. And remember those low parryable moves uh, like junkyard kick that you have such a hard time low parrying or up four one three. These types of moves, when you're spaced out at range three, you can see them coming. You have more time to react to them because the first move will whiff. And the same can be said for the duckable strings as well, because you have that distance and the first hit it's going to whiff. You have time now to properly prepare yourself. To duck and at this range we can shut down laws crouch mix up as well so if he decides to duck we know a slide is coming because we have already expected these are the moves that he's gonna connect at this range but what's that you say well what if law decides to brush in headstrong well we're motherfucking Jack which means that we have all the tools at this range to keep law out. We have all the tools. And, you know, you can pick any of the tools from Jack. Nine times out of ten, they'll be a good keep out tool. Okay, now let's say we go back to playing at range zero. 
At this point, we have no idea what to expect from our opponents now. Anything and everything could be thrown at us at any point in time. And since our level of expectation is next to nothing, it will be much more difficult to prepare a proper response. I mean, all we have at this range as a panic move is forward two, but we have to watch out for all of this shit right here. All of this, right? And this is a ton of stuff to proper, properly punish. Because before, at range three, we just had to prepare two different punishes. Down four two for uh, the longer range things, and one one to punish things that are slightly faster. And if they whiff, we use down forward two as a punish. But now, at range zero, we have to prepare our 10 frame punish. We have to prepare our 11 frame punish. We have to prepare our 13 frame punish. We have to prepare our 15 frame punish. And maybe we even have to prepare for, you know, a 17 frame punish. So this just, the preparation that's required at range zero is just astronomically more than if we were at range three and could have expected our opponent and properly prepared, increasing our reaction time. So proper expectation and preparedness will drastically shorten reaction time. The fewer options to expect, the better we can prepare countermeasures and the faster we can react to make those punishes just in time. Stimulated sensory modality. Now this is nothing more than just a fancy way of saying how senses are used to perceive a stimulus. If you see a ball thrown at you, then the sensory modality is visual. If you hear your alarm clock in the morning, then sensory modality is auditory. As a general rule, reaction time is actually shortest to be stimulated with auditory sensory modality. However, when visual and auditory sensory modality are paired together, response times can be even faster. For the most part, this is a easy one to improve in Tekken. Extremely easy. Play the game with sound on when possible. I know some of you guys love to listen to music or have something else playing in the background when playing, but use the game's audio in addition to visual cues to help increase your reaction time. For example, let's look at Josie's Crouch Dash 2 and Crouch Dash 3 once more. Just seeing this here, Crouch Dash 2 and Crouch Dash 3 can be difficult and hard to react to. But here, let me turn off the music and turn on the sound effects. Notice. Crouch Dash 2. Crouch Dash 3. Yeah. Notice yeah. how there's an extra cue to yeah. let you know when Crouch Dash 3, the yeah. load is about to hit. So yeah. this is just one of many examples, but play with sound on, please, guys. State of being. This encompasses physiological, biological, and mental status at the time of decision making. All right, factors such as age, uh, sleepiness, having attention divided, uh, being the under the effects of alcohol or caffeine, uh, breeding a fever, you get the idea. Basically things of that nature. Certain aspects regarding state of being can be fully controlled while others can't. For example, age and health, these two factors uh, can't really be controlled, while things such as sleepiness or drunkenness are more easily controlled. So make sure to be in the best state of being possible and you're on your way to improving your CRT. Because I'm sure everybody's played Tekken after having a night's drinking and decision making and reaction time just aren't in your favor. So those are the five ways to help increase your CRT, your choice reaction time. And in this video, I really hope to have shed some light for those of you who are struggling to deal with things such as, you know, seeable lows, low parable strings, um, and also, you know, certain moves that you can duck under, 
there's a lot of things that require reaction time in Tekken. But if you can improve on the five factors that I talked about, uh, such as familiarity, being able to see the moves uh, over and over and over again until it gets burned into your mind, things such as expectations, right? Playing at ranges where you're able to quarter off your opponent and limit them to a select bit of moves so you're not looking out for everything like how can you how can you block snake edge when you're looking out for a hundred other different moves uh, preparation having moves ready so that when you do block the moves that you're expecting you're able to punish correctly or being able to be at a range so that you are prepared to deal with uh, whiffs um, also make sure to be in the best state of being possible as well as just playing with the sound on to help you recognize and react to things so thank you so much for sticking around for this video and for those of you newcomers or subscribers i really appreciate everything you guys have done for this channel and thanks again to the main man if you like this video uh, comment subscribe hit that notif notification bell you know the drill. Thanks so much and have a good one. I'm Peter and signing out.